What's going on, Pinnacle students? I hope y'all are having a fantastic day. So hey, we're continuing again in our series of what to do when you don't know what to do. And today we're talking about something called payback. Yeah, uh, I don't know about you. For me, when I first think payback, I'm all of a sudden like, mm, I'm going to get payback for that time he did this, this, and this. Erica has this saying, uh, if I do something to her, like a prank or something, she goes tenfold. I mean, and like the payback to me is going to be 10 times worse. She'll do a prank that's 10 times worse to me. There's also a payback of like, you know, I just bought a house. Uh, mortgage is starting to finally get finalized. Uh, but, you know, I owe the bank a lot of money now and I got to pay the bank back. So we have different things, uh, different things that we think about payback. And a lot of times I think for you guys, you could say payback is what I talked about first. Like I'm going to get you back for something that you did to me. And that comes in different ways. First, we have like public payback. Like I'm going to humiliate you in front of everyone. Okay, like this will be great. Everyone will know that I got you back. And then the second one is maybe like a passive payback. Like uh, you just, you know, you're real passive aggressive. Just oh, like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, you know, whatever. And just walked on, right? You're being real like, oh, to this person. And maybe the third one is imaginary. Like you're just sitting in your room in a dark corner going, yes. Yes, and I get you back for this. <laughs> this falls into all sorts of different situations, but I want to talk about a situation where Joseph gets set up for the ultimate payback to his brothers. You had the brothers that were like, hey, let's kill him. And they're like, eh, maybe that's a little too harsh, one of them said. And I was like, oh, well, we'll just sell him into slavery. Joseph, who got sold into slavery, then became the Pharaoh's right hand guy and then got demoted and sent to prison and then came back because he interpreted a dream and he stayed with God during that whole time. And where we're getting to today is how Joseph pays back his brothers. So where we're at now is Joseph is pretty much in charge of all of Egypt. Okay. He's like the Egyptian prime minister in terms of just ruling everything. Life is turning out pretty good for him. He's got power, success, and he could use that real easy over his brothers. Let's see why. So let's jump into Genesis and let's see what's going on here because it's like TV drama setup, man. It's so good. Genesis 45 verse 1 through 3. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all of his attendants. And he cried out, have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. All right, so what's happened here is, is Joseph is in charge of all of Egypt. And in the land far away and coming into Egypt, there is this like massive uh, just wipeout of crops. Um, there's no food. Uh, society's like falling apart. And Joseph's brothers come to Egypt to seek help. And they know who's, who's going to give in charge of giving them help. Joseph, paybacks are coming, boys. Ah! So Joseph asks them to leave, and he comes back, and he said, it says, and Joseph, he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and the Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Think about this. You think your brother's dead at this point, okay? Your brothers sold him into slavery. They've not heard anything about him. They don't know what's going on. They're just assuming that Joseph is dead. And then they get close to him. And Joseph says, you are my brothers. Is my dad still alive? And they're like, oh my gosh, Joseph's alive. And he's the one in charge. And we're Woo, we going to get it now, boys. I don't know about you. If this was me, if I was Joseph, I'd immediately be like, oh yeah, let's get it. I'm You all, straight to prison. Straight to whatever. I'm going to sell all of you to slavery. You know, like, Joseph could do whatever he wanted at this point, pretty much. Like, sky's the limit. Ah, payback time. Woo -woo. Something very interesting that I think most of us would not do, Joseph does, to set the example of what we should do when we don't know what to do. Because I don't know about you. Do you, Would you know what you would do if, if the brothers that tried to murder you came asking for help years later? So we're in Genesis 45. Joseph says, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed 
And do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing and no reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Y'all, Joseph just looked at his brothers and said, basically, thanks for sending me into slavery. Because you sent me into slavery, I am able to save you now. The hurt that Joseph would have had to went through, walk through, and process to get to this point was only because he had gave it all to God. He had said, God, you're in control of this. I don't know what to do. But I'm going to trust you so that you can do whatever you need in this situation. Now, you might say, you might ask, like, oh, Walker, did God plan for Joseph to get sold into slavery? And it's like, well, God is all knowing, yes. But it was a sin that the brothers sent him into slavery. So no, God did not purposefully send Joseph into slavery. But God is so, this, this is even, this is, this is more impactful. God was able to use that situation and ultimately redeem it and redeem this family. The common thing here is this family, eventually because of this and Joseph and, and handing it over to God and God working through Joseph, this family experiences peace. And I don't know about you, but peace right now, peace of mind is a big thing. Be awesome for everyone just to experience some peace. We have to make the peace. We have to hand it to God and choose to make peace. It doesn't just happen. Joseph could have very easily just murdered his brothers, sent them to be killed. But he chose peace rather than payback. So when you don't know what to do, choose peace over payback. Every decision we make, we've got to be choosing that peace. We've got to be choosing that love that God showed us, that Christ set the example for. So hey, if you're a Christian and you've been following along with this, I, you guys choose peace over payback. It's very easy to be in the payback mentality right now. Be in the peace mentality. Pray for God. Give whatever hurt you have. Listen, if you're angry about something, give it to God. Make peace with that person. And hey, maybe, maybe you're watching this and you wouldn't consider yourself a, a Christian or a Christ follower. Uh, I want to challenge you on, on just that teaching of, of what would it look like to choose peace over payback for many of the situations in your life. And then I'll challenge you to look to even greater peace that I talked about earlier of God sending Jesus to set peace for all of us. So, hey, that's what I got for this week. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week, and I can't wait to see you soon. Peace!